Have you ever wondered how to select a battery for your electronics projects? Maybe you need something this size or this size or even this size. The concept is actually fairly simple and this video will guide you through all the basic information you need to build your own battery packs for your electronics projects. Check the video description for a link to an article containing all the same information in a different format and if you're looking for more advanced information perhaps the sponsor of today's video is what you're looking for. Keysight. Keysight doesn't just make awesome hardware for enthusiasts, they also cater to industry professionals and they have quite a few use cases for EV vehicles like the focus of this message how to validate EV battery modules. If you're in an industry designing or specking out batteries for electric vehicles, this use case is for you. But if you're not, like me, it is really interesting to have a look at what the professionals use to design and test modules that eventually end up powering our cars. Check it and a whole bunch of other use cases out in the link in the description. Thank you to Keysight for sponsoring this segment of the video. Before you get started, there are a couple things that you need to know. One is your project or device that you do want to power by battery power. You need to know the voltage it needs, you need to know the current it needs, and you need to know how long you want to run it for on battery power. The best way to do this is to actually use it while measuring its current draw with a power supply or a multimeter in series. If you're just using a consumer device though, Often the voltage and current requirements will be written on the back of it. For the batteries you're going to select, you need to know what each cell's nominal voltage is, what its capacity is, measured in either milliamp hours or amp hours, and the amount of current it can deliver. Now thankfully for many consumer cells like say AA's or C cells, um, the capacity and the voltage will be written directly on the cell. For how much current it can deliver, however, you may need to Google the specific part number and with the word datasheet and pull up the actual datasheet. In this datasheet, you'll get a little bit more in-depth information about the current delivery of the cell, and you'll also see more precise information about how much capacity it has at how much current it's delivering. The rule of thumb is that you do not want to max out your cells. You want to go somewhere at the 80% range or even lower if you want to be kinder to your cells. More information about this kind of stuff in a future video. In principle, the capacity is the amount of current it can deliver for an hour of time. Now in reality, it's not quite that simple. More videos about that in the future, but generally speaking, if you have a one amp hour battery, that means you would theoretically be able to discharge an amp out of it for an hour and then it would be depleted, which also means that if you're only discharging half that amount, so let's say 500 milliamps, you should be able to discharge that for two hours. And if you're discharging a quarter, so let's say 250 milliamps, you should be able to discharge that amount for four hours. That's not really how it works in practice, but it's close enough to get you going with your projects. The next thing we're going to do to start specking out our battery pack is we're going to try to achieve the voltage that we need. So let's just say for this example that we need a 5 volt battery pack and we need 1 amp of continuous discharge. And we want to run this thing for 1 hour on battery power. But all we have available to us are these nickel metal hydride AA cells that um, only have 1.2 volts per cell and they have 2000 milliamp hours but they can only provide approximately 500 milliamps of current. Well since we have 1.2 volts per cell we can get pretty close we can get 4.8 volts out of these but we're going to have to put them in series very likely, if you've ever put more than one battery into a device, you've been putting them in series. Let me show you what putting them in series actually entails. So I'm just going to line up our batteries here, and we're going to have our main positive, which we want all of our, you know, 4.8 volts at. So there's the main positive. And then we're going to want to go over here and connect to this cell right there. So at this point, between here and here, we have 1.2 volts. But we need more voltage than that. So we will take a wire, 
and we will connect the negative to the positive, and then the negative to the positive, and then the negative to the positive. And then this negative over here, we bring this over, and that's our main negative. And so now the voltage going through here also has to go through here and here and here. It's like an increase in pressure that will increase our voltage from 1.2 to 4.8 volts because when you put batteries in series, it's additive voltage. They add to each other. So now we essentially have a pack which is 4.8 volts which can provide still the same 500 milliamps but also only still has a capacity of 2000 milliamp hours. Let me rearrange these into a more familiar format. It is very likely that when you've put batteries into a device, more than one, you've been actually installing them one forward and one backwards in an alternating fashion, sort of like this. Ever wonder why is that? Well, your main pack positive is still going to be over here, and now your main negative is over here. But now look at your battery interconnects. To put them in series, instead of going all the way around, we can just hook them up like this. And in a battery box, this is typically done with just metal strips. So it's a very efficient way to put cells in series to make a battery pack. So this is very likely the kind of setup that you've already seen before. But now we have a problem. Our specific cells are only specced to give 500 milliamps at a time. We have the capacity, we could theoretically run this for two hours, but we cannot deliver the one amp necessary current through these specific cells. Now we could upgrade these cells, but what if the cells that can provide enough current cost 10 times as much? Does that make sense? Not really. But there is a solution. You see, in order to increase the amount of current delivery, we need to have more cells spreading the load amongst themselves. So if we have one single cell, like so, we can take the main battery positive here, and we can take the main battery negative here, and this will be able to provide our 500 milliamps. But what if we want to provide double? Well. If one battery can provide 500, that means two cells can provide double. And so we can connect this one like that, and we can connect this one like that. And now we have a pack of cells which will do 1.2 volts, but now can deliver the full one amp that we need. In fact, if we wanted to be gentler on our cells, well then, we can just add more in parallel. So that would be connecting the positives together and the negatives together. This has the added benefit of also increasing our capacity. So right now, our pack total voltage will be 1.2 volts our pack current delivering capabilities will be about 2,000 milliamps or 2 amps but our capacity will be quadrupled as well so now we'll actually have eight thousand milliamp hours but we still have a problem our voltage is only 1.2 volts. Our 5 volt device will not run on 1.2 volts. So now what do we do? So you can imagine how we can extend this concept to infinity, but let me just make a little diagram of what I was thinking here. So we've got 8 cells now, and depending on how we arrange them, we can actually achieve our goals of 5 volts, 1 amp, for 1 hour. 
So first things first, we'll make the main pack positive over this way. So here's the positive. And then we'll make the main pack negative over this way. And then we're going to connect this one in series with this one. Remember, positive, uh, negative to positive, and this one in series with this one. But then we're also going to put this one in parallel with this one. So they're both providing current. And then this one will be connected to this one. And this one is in parallel. And this one is in parallel. And so the current is now going this way. And then we're going to connect these two to go all the way to our negative. But again, we need another one in parallel. This one here. So these are connected. And now our pack will look a little bit more like this. So we have our 4.8 volts from the additive voltage. 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2. Our capacity will be effectively doubled. This one provides 2000 milliamp hours and this one provides 2000 milliamp hours. So that's how it works. And since we've doubled our current capabilities, then we're going to be at 1000 milliamp. And you can see how you can extend this even more. If I had more space on screen, we can add another four cells and put them in parallel with this one, this one, this one, and this one. We would have another 1000 milliamps of current delivering capability. We would have another 2000 milliamp hours of capacity and our voltage would remain the same. So already with this setup, we should be able to deliver our five volts, one amp continuous and it should last us roughly four times the amount of time that we spec'd out for. So allow me a quick demonstration. I've got these 1.2 volts per cell uh, batteries. However, uh, they're in various states of charge, so they might be a little bit higher. But I have them here in series. So positive here, through here, connected through here, connected through here, main negative over here. So from what we've learned, we should see about 3.6 volts if I take a measurement between the main pack negative and the main pack positive. Yeah, I mean, pretty close. 3.95. So that means they are slightly charged more than their nominal voltage. More about that in a future video. But as you can see, I have added up the voltages and we get a higher voltage. However, the capacity is unchanged. So if one of these cells can provide 2000 milliamp hours, this pack can also provide 2000 milliamp hours. And now if you'll notice, all the positives are pointing the same way, all the negatives pointing the same way, all the negatives are tied together, all the positives are tied together. So now we should get about 1.2 volts. It'll probably be a bit higher because again, these things are a little bit more charged. Yep, there we go, 1.322 volts because now they are all in parallel, which means now I can pull effectively three times the amount of current out of um, this array of three than I would from just one. It would last about three times as long if I didn't pull three times the amount of current. They will last just as long if you do pull three times, but their voltage is much lower. As I explain this one here, make sure to go down in the comments below and tell me what you think that the capacity, the current handling, and the voltage of this pack would be, and make sure you write it down before I reveal it. So assuming that each of these cells are 2000 milliamp hours, their current handling capabilities is 500 milliamps, and their nominal voltage is about 1.3, because that's what we measured last time. I've got these two here in parallel, which are in series with these two here, which are in parallel, which are in series with these two here, which are in parallel. So basically the voltage goes through these two, across, through these two, across, through these two. Put your guesses in the description how much voltage current handling capability and capacity you think it'll have. The first one to have the correct answer, I will pin. So here goes. Here's the voltage. 3.964. The current ha handling capability will be double what a single cell is. 
therefore 1 amp continuous, and the capacity will be 4000 milliamp hours. So if you're the first one to comment that, I will pin your comment. The last thing to consider is how do we name these packs? Well, we have S and we have P. So the amount of cells that you have in series determines the amount of S and the amount of cells you have in parallel determines the amount of P. So this one here is actually four cells in series. So this would be a 4S pack. This is four cells in parallel. So that would be a 4P pack. And any combination of those, you would just name, you know, X, S, X, P. And so our examples we used earlier, we had the 3S, 2P configuration. And all this is just what you want to name your pack. Or if you just want to purchase a pack, you can use that same nomenclature. And so that's it. Um, that's about as much information as you need to get started with specking out uh, packs, whether it be using high discharge packs like these for remote control cars, whether they be using recycled uh, lithium cells or AA batteries you find in the dollar store or these big energy storage lithium iron phosphate packs. Either way, you should have enough to get started. Let me know what you're going to do with this information down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.